Remaining under motions and resolutions, Senator Gazelka. Uh, Mr. President, members, uh, pursuant to Rule 26, I designate the following bill be made for special order for immediate consideration, Senate File 3813. The sheet is on your desk, members. Members, the bill up for consideration today is number 56 on general orders, Senate File 3813, Senator Ralph. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, before we get started, I do want to make some thank yous to my co-authors for their work, the support of the staff, the support of the other senators, uh, especially uh, Senator Benson, who has done a lot of work on this bill. Um, thank you for leadership for moving this bill along quickly, because this is an important issue. Uh, we had a second confirmed case of corona over the weekend, and uh, so we are going to have to be dealing with this. And for that, purpose, that reason, uh, we have this bill before us. Uh, just a little background on the bill. The bill was dropped last week. Uh, shortly thereafter, um, I and other members met with Commissioner Malcolm, and she presented a budget that she had worked out, and it was based on that budget that we developed the numbers that we're using, and thus we come to the number, the number that's in, in, uh, in the bill. Basically, what this bill does is it appropriates, actually transfers, this is not an appropriation, it's a transfer to the, uh, I call it the Medical Emergency Contingency Fund, uh, very similar to our disaster, natural disaster relief contingency fund. This ensures that we have money immediately available to respond to uh, a medical emergency within the state. Uh, we've already met the conditions for that and the money will be available as soon as the, the bill clears the, the process. Uh, the, the amount in the bill is $20.899 million. There are currently $4.62 million in the contingency fund that has already been released for use. It can be used for COVID, but I want to make uh, one point here. Some people have asked, well, what if there's another emergency, medical emergency that we need money? Well, there is that 4.6 million is in there and can be used for stuff other than COVID-19 response. The, one of the things that we wanted to do was be fiscally responsible here. So there is a provision that says in the event we are able to contain this, this uh, spread, this outbreak, and there is money left in the contingency fund, or we do receive reimbursements. If they are to re reimburse money that was spent on the COVID-19, that money will be returned to the general fund. So this is not creating an ongoing fund, it is creating a, a fund that is stri strictly in response to this outbreak. There is a provision that if the $4.62 million was used for COVID response, then we would replenish that amount or we would not uh, cancel all of the, of the money that is in the account, thus allowing the, that emergency money to remain there even though we didn't get all of the money back from, the, uh, from that contingency fund. So this is a fairly careful thought out bill. Uh, I do have an amendment. Uh, this is the A9 amendment. Senator Ralph offers the A9 amendment. The secretary will report the amendment. Senator Ralph moves to amend Senate file number 3813 as follows, page one, line five, delete. This is the A9 amendment. To the amendment, Senator Ralph. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, this is a strictly technical amendment. There were some items that were uh, that were suggested by the department and, uh, and and language that just cleans up the amendment. So uh, it basic it basically changes just some letters and changes a couple of words. There are no substantive effects to this. With that, I will stand for questions. Discussion on the A-9 amendment. Senator Dames. Well, thank you, Mr. President, and I would just like to thank uh, 
the author for bringing this uh, bill forward. Uh, I know that Jerry's done a lot of work on this and uh, Jerry Ralph has also worked with the Department of uh, the, the MDA, the Minnesota Department of Health in order to uh, make sure that we're looking at the number of dollars that are requested and are necessary. So I think this is a very good bill and I'd urge a green vote on it. And again, I'd like to thank uh, Senator Ralph for bringing this forward. Okay. Discussion on the A9 amendment. See no discussion, Senator Nelson. See no further discussion. Okay, uh, members do not have the amendment uh, in front of them. We'll hang tight here until everyone can see the amendment. Members, this is just a friendly reminder uh, to remember to bring your computers. Uh, and if you do want a copy of an amendment, uh, let the desk know ahead of time, and we will make sure that we have enough amendments printed for everyone. All right, members, we're on the A9 amendment. Is there any further discussion? Seeing no further discussion, all those in favor of the amendment say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. We are back on Senate File 3813 as amended. Senator Ralph. Uh, at this point, I will uh, stand for questions. Uh, Members, we're on Senate File 3813. Is there any further discussion? Senator Marty. Uh, Mr. President, we're, Senator Ralph, we're still looking for confirmation from Senate Council or Fiscal or somebody on whether the five million that stays in the account um, is available without the limit on being spent only on COVID-19 because all this money is being transferred there with that purpose. If they spend all but $5 million on it, it reverts back. Or even if they only spend $2 million, $5 million reverts back at the end of the year. But then the question is, what about tuberculosis and everything else? Because the way I read this, it says this is all tied to that, except for the $4.6 million, which is presumably being spent right now. Do you have any word? We're waiting from Senate Council to hear about that. But have you heard anything about that? Senator Ralph will yield. Senator Ralph. Uh, Mr. President, Senator Marty, it is my understanding that only if there is money that was spent on the COVID that we will reimburse the 4.62 the actually up to 5 million. If the money was spent on something else, during the same period, if there was another outbreak of tuberculosis or other such uh, pandemic, that money would not be reimbursed out of the money that, that the 20.889 uh, 20 million or any other federal funds that might reimburse. So the idea is here, if they spend the money that's there now on COVID, we will, we will allow that to be replenished so that we end up with 4.6 or actually 5 million, unless they spend it on something else, then we will only reimburse what they spent on the COVID response out of those, shall we call them unrestricted funds, the 4.6 million. Senator Marty. Mr. President, Senator Ralph, I understand that's the intent. I'm not sure that's what this language does. This language does not say any money that was spent for other things doesn't get reimbursed. Mm -hmm. It simply says at the end of the year, of February 1st, which is going to put us in a real pinch at the beginning of the next session, but I'm not raising that right now. The health department has raised that concern. But the concern simply that, that this money is being taken away from other purposes. Um, because the department, I think, was asking for a total of 25 million. We put in this 20.8 something because there was 5 million in there. If they spend, the assumption is it will all be used for that. But the language in the bill says that the money going back is tied. The language here says the money stays in the account. It doesn't say it loses this commitment to being this fence that says it can only be spent for COVID. Uh, Mr. Senator, President. Senator Ralph. 
Uh, Mr. President and Senator Marty. Uh, I am basing the, the, what I'm expressing here on the opinions of council and the people that have drafted this. Uh, if council does have a different interpretation, uh, then I'm unaware of it. Uh, I, we discussed this pretty thoroughly. Uh, what we wanted to do was, was two things. First of all, we wanted to be, make sure that the money, of course, was spent, on, the, the, the 20.89 million was spent on COVID response. They already had authority to spend the other money on whatever they wanted. If they choose to spend it on COVID, that's fine. And that's why we indicated that if they did so do, that we would, re we would allow that to be replenished. That's my understanding. But if they, if they spend it on something else, they would have to come back, the commissioner would have to come back under the procedures set forth in the statute, which I believe you have a copy of, and, and then also request a separate, or a separate transfer to reestablish the balance or if they need more. I mean, we don't know. This is a very fluid situation. I am presuming that they will probably use most of that $4.6 million for COVID response. And if they do, that this bill would allow that to be replenished. Mr. Senator Mr. President, Marty. Mr. President, Senator Ralph, again, I'm not disagreeing with what I think your intent is. I'm just saying I don't think this language says that. Mm -hmm. And I think it would be very helpful to hear from somebody from Senate Council somehow to hear that this language accomplishes what you say. I don't see anything here that says if money is, some of that $4.6 million is spent for something else, this money can be used to replenish that. All this says is $20. Point eight million is dedicated to this. It goes back. It stays. Five million will stay in the account, but that's all under this condition that that twenty point eight million has to be for this. So you're saying what what I think we agree the intent was going to be, but I don't think that's what the language actually says. Senator Gazelka. Uh, Mr. President, I move for a about a five minute recess. I think Council is going to give us some advice and maybe a, a slight tweak. Senator Gazelka moves that the Senate uh, recess to the call of the president to the call of the president a very short recess. Uh, all those in favor say aye. aye. Opposed say no. Yes. Motion prevails. The Senate is in recess. We have crafted another amendment. Uh, I believe this is the A50 amendment that I would like to introduce at this time. Senator Ralph offers the A. 50 amendment, the secretary will report the amendment. Senator Ralph moves to amend the Ralph amendment to Senate file number 3813 adopted by the Senate March 9th, 2020 as follows, page one, delete lines seven and eight and insert. This is the A50 amendment. Discussion on the A50 amendment, Senator Ralph. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. And I want to thank uh, Senator Marty for bringing this to our attention. If someone questions, one person can question it, then someone else can. So I think it's wise that we actually go forward and, and make it very clear what our intention is. Uh, basically, the, the, the operative language here identifies any amount remaining in the account after February 1st, 2021 is not subjected to the restriction provided in this sec section with the exception that, and then that would bring us back to the main, the main bill, which would, I believe, take care of the problem. And I would stand for any questions. Members, we have the A50 amendment in front of us. Is there any discussion on the amendment? Mr. President. Senator Benson. Are we on the A50 as an amendment to the amendment or as a standalone amendment? Senator Benson, uh, Senate File 3813 was amended, but this, the A50, is a standalone amendment. Thank you, bill. Mr. President. Any further discussion on the A50 amendment? Seeing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Those opposed say no. The motion prevails and the amendment is adopted. We're back on Senate file 3813 as amended. Any further discussion? Senator Dibble. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, if Senator Ralph would yield. 
Senator Ralph will yield. Senator Dibble. Um, thank you, uh, Mr. President uh, and, and Senator Ralph. I appreciate you bringing forward this bill. You and I had a discussion a uh, little earlier uh, prior to session uh, about an idea that had come up around supporting employers and employees um, should, should this uh, whole issue uh, develop to a point where uh, folks are needing or wanting to stay home to work and Minnesota has uh, an existing program that was developed a number of years ago through a grant from the Federal Department of Transportation, um, the Urban Partnership Agreement, in which uh, support and technical assistance and advice and strategies and management tools were um, provided to employers and employees who wanted to move more in this direction. Um, I had an amendment drawn and at your uh, urging um, have chosen not to offer that amendment um, because this bill is, is uh, pretty well uh, locked up and, 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 and pretty tight in terms of the, the budgetary allocations that are going to be made. But my question is, um, will there be an opportunity at some point in the near future to talk about issues like this as well as others uh, in terms of fashioning a response should things come to pass in Minnesota where we're needing to make some of these kinds of changes in our daily activities? Senator Ralph. Uh, thank you, Mr. President, and thank you, Senator Nibble. Well, I'm not real good at crystal ball in the future, but it, I believe that if the uh, pandemic does continue to grow and we do require additional money, that at that point in time, I, we certainly would entertain some kind of an of a, of a opportunity to look at that program. Uh, and I, I do believe if this does continue to grow, we probably will be revisiting. But at this point in time, it's, it's very difficult to say what we're going to be doing. Further discussion on Senate File 3813, Senator Wicklin. Thank you, Mr. President. Um, I have a question. Uh, I'm wondering if Senator Benson will yield. Senator Benson will yield. Senator Wicklin. Thank you. Uh, we, we resolved one of the questions we had with the ability, um, for the ability of the Department of Health to respond to other public health um, outbreaks that might occur uh, with the amendment and clarifying that, that there will be, that the money canceled um, will not affect a $5 million amount that could be used for other outbreaks. But I'm wondering if Senator Benson could also um, discuss whether the money, once the um, appropriation is transferred into that um, account, uh, will the money that exists today, uh, something over $4 million, that can be used for other outbreaks, uh, will that money still be available for the Department of Health to respond to outbreaks that might occur um, over the next few months that that they need to spend money on outside of the COVID disease. Can you please um, tell us more about how we will assure the department um, that there will be um, money available to address other outbreaks? Thank you. Senator Benson. Thank you, Mr. President and Senator Wicklin. And first of all, I need to apologize uh, to Senator Franzen. When she asked this question earlier, I was short and I am sorry. Um, but the LAC language is permissive. Um, it doesn't mandate that they use it on COVID. And so as federal money comes in, I understand there's another LAC request being uh, drafted now, and we will respond to that quickly so that the federal funds will be available. This money will be available um, through the LAC process, and that would leave that 4.6 million or whatever is unexpended when those LAC requests come in, would leave that money available for other requests to serve other needs. So the 4.6 million that was requested last week that the LAC responded to on Friday could be available for other outbreaks as we roll forward. Senator Wicklin. Thank you, Mr. President. Thank you, Senator Benson. I, that clarifies it, and, I, and hopefully if there are other questions raised about that, we could have more discussion at another time, but um, hopefully that clarifies that there will be uh, money available because we don't know if this is the only um, outbreak that will 
we will need to deal with in the next few months. Um, and then just one comment about the language in the bill with the cancel back date of February 1st, 2021. Um, just my uh, comment on that would be that it, it is pretty early in session, and I understand that we do respond to um, things that are emergencies and, and emergency needs fairly quickly. Um, I would be more comfortable if the date was a little bit um, later in session so that we would have time um, to make sure that uh, that there is money in the account if needed after that. So that was just a comment, and I appreciate uh, the other amendment that was made. Thank you. Further discussion on Senate File 3813, Senator Marty. Thank you, Mr. President. And I'm very pleased that this is moving quickly and maybe passing today yet. It's a good sign that the administration, the legislature can work together on a crisis like this. And I think that's very good news. I think we should keep in mind that this 21 million we hope is the last time we have to do this, but I think none of us should be surprised if later this session there is another bill like this could be exponentially larger than this, or later this fall a need for something like this. We'll hope it doesn't happen that way, but we should all be ready for it and ready to move quickly. I want to say that this illustration has shown how we do have a very good public health system, a good health department and local public health system. And it is a good system with some huge gaping loopholes in it. And the two I'll point out are one that when you are trying to deal with an infectious disease like this and not everybody has health care coverage, maybe it's 5% that don't plus another 20 some percent who have very high deductible plans and therefore they don't go see the doctor when we want them to do so, um, that that's a huge gap here and we can't expect people who have no coverage who may end up with several thousand dollar bills to go in and get checked out when we want them to. So we should keep that in mind. And similarly, the message that we're getting very clearly is not just hand sanitation and so on, but also stay home when you're sick. And I think that should remind us again that sick and safe leave is something that we as legislators, our staff have, but not everybody in our state has that. And when people are going, many of them fast food workers, people who meet lots of members of the public. If they are sick, we want them to stay home, but they have no way to be able to afford staying home. So I think we have to say we have a very good public health system, but we have huge gaping holes in it related to health care coverage and related to sick leave. And I hope we keep those things in mind in the next couple of months as we address this issue going forward. Further discussion on Senate File 3813 as amended. Seeing no further discussion, the Secretary will give Senate File 3813 as amended its third reading. Senate File number 3813, a bill for an act relating to health. Third reading. Final discussion on Senate File 3813, Senator Nelson. Thank you, uh, Mr. President. I rise in support of this bill, and I thank uh, Senator Ralph for shepherding this through in such a timely manner. I am glad to co-sponsor uh, this bill. It is an important bill. You know, a lot of times up here we talk about urgency. Well, now that we do have cases confirmed of coronavirus or COVID-19 in our state, members, this truly is an emergency. Uh, it is of great urgency, uh, but it is not dire. We must not pander in panic, but what we are doing today is what we must do. We must prepare. This is preparation. We must prepare so that Minnesotans can be healthy. We must prepare to keep this from spreading out of control. And we must manage existing cases. We know that the health and well-being of Minnesotans is our top priority. And I'm glad today that we are getting necessary initial funding out the door so that our health professionals can respond faster, so that our testing for the coronavirus, COVID-19, 
can be quicker, so that our public health officials can do more contact tracking. This is an important step today. I am very glad to live in the state of Minnesota where we do have a renowned, strong public health. And we know that this is a time for public information as well. So it is critical that all those things that Minnesotans have been doing uh, to prevent flu, amp those up. Continue that robust hand washing, stay home if you're sick, and uh, stay tuned uh, for new developments. But today, this is the first thing we must do. This is a good bipartisan effort. I do hope that we, I believe, we'll see action in the other bodies soon, and we hope this is sent um, immediately to Governor Walz's desk. Thank you. Members, we're on final discussion on Senate File 3813. Senator Herr. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, I appreciate uh, Senator Ralph uh, introduced this bill, and uh, we're going to vote past the floor here. But we all know COVID-19 is real, and the high concern of people is real. We all need to take uh, good pre precautions as citizens uh, for our healthy needs. Um, and aside from the public health matters, you know, bias toward Asian descent is also real. You know, we, we saw on social media bullying uh, folks who may look Asian, so I just want to make People are aware of that. Um, I do receive phone calls and reports of alleged hate crime from my constituents as well. Uh, people labeling um, another person who have Asian look as a COVID-19 recipient. So mainly I just want to make aware of this that uh, this is not a health issue, it's a human right issue. And that if anybody is facing this situation, we have an agency, a human rights agency, to take care of, and I want to also take this time to say their number, because not only legislators are watching our line here, uh, the public do, and the human rights intake is 651-539-1133. I also pass a flyer for everyone to see that virus don't discriminate, and neither should we. And so the fly that I pass to everybody is just to remind that a uh, virus doesn't discriminate, so we shouldn't discriminate, and stigma will not fight the corona, cor coronavirus. Uh, sharing accurate information will. So thank you for everybody's time. Members, we're on final discussion for the bill. Senator Benson. Thank you, Mr. President, members. First of all, I want to talk about the people in the public health um, laboratory who worked all weekend, who are turning around tests as fast as they can. They are doing just an incredible job. And well, you know, we didn't get going as fast as we wanted to because of a faulty test coming out of the CDC. Our people stepped up and did everything they could as soon as they could. And I am honored to get to see the collaboration that happens between our public health system and our health care system as they work to keep this from spreading um, beyond the two cases that we have so far. Again, as we work to prepare a response, the House and Senate, House, Senate and Governor will focus on preparation and cooperation. I feel certain that there will be future bills to address agreed upon needs for long-term care systems and our hospitals. We will have a plan for interim because we don't know when this will end or how it will end. Um, I have heard some things that upset me a little bit. Uh, I got calls from nursing home administrators saying their masks were being stolen. It's not helpful to take masks from healthcare workers, so I hope Minnesotans will um, seek their better angels and focus on prevention and not um, be overly concerned in ways that are not helpful to mitigating the spread. I want to thank Senator Ralph for bringing this idea forward in such 
a rapid way and for letting me work with him as we shape this moving forward. Senator Rosen, you were key to making sure that fiscal constraints remain in place so that Minnesotans will know we are spending what we need to and not just what we want to. Um, I want to thank Senator Malcolm and her, or I'm sorry, <laughs> Commissioner Malcolm and her staff for being available all day yesterday as we worked through language to try to get it right today. And Senator Marty, thank you for your catch and Senator Wickland for paying such close attention to the language of the bill and to our staff who Sunday night were helping us get amendments drafted. Um, we could not get here without that level of effort and so um, I think Minnesotans should be pleased to see that their government is working across uh, bodies and across party lines to get this done today and I am proud to ask for a green vote on this bill. Members were on final discussion for Senate File 3813, Senator Ralph. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Just uh, to wrap up here, I too want to echo the uh, sentiments of uh, Senator Benson with regard to the, 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 the professionalism and the response that we received from the department. The fact the governor stepped up and, and moved this along, helped facilitate it. I think it's important. Uh, this is a bipartisan effort, and uh, it's the way government should work. So with that, I would ask for a green vote. Thank you. Final discussion on Senate File 3813, Senator Gazelka. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Members, uh, I'm pretty sure that this will pass uh, with large numbers, but I, I wanted to give some perspective as we're moving forward. Uh, this is from the Minnesota Department of Health reported flu cases, flu cases members as of Wednesday, March 4th, 2020. So far this season, we've identified 93 deaths in Minnesota, two of them uh, people under 18, over 3,000 hospitalized with a median age of 56, 848 outbreaks of influenza-like illness in K-12 schools, 82 outbreaks of influence in long in influenza in long-term care facilities. Uh, the percentage of influenza tests that are positive remain elevated at 35 percent. This is all about the flu. And finally, nationally, it's been reported that there are 46,000 deaths this year from flu since October. Why am I bringing that up? Members, it's because I, I don't want us to lose perspective. This is serious, but we should not do what we do out of fear. We should not legislate out of fear. We should not uh, make our habits about how we live life as Americans out of fear. It should simply be out of caution and being careful and being wise, but not out of fear. And if we do all the things that uh, we're asked to do, just like with the flu, whether it's covering our cough or washing our hands or staying home when you're sick, we're going to navigate through this. And so, so far in Minnesota, there's two no, the cases that we know of and a little over 500 nationwide. So if you compare that to flu, I want you to think about how are we responding. So as a body here, I want to, I want to say that we are taking this serious. We're not just doing an ounce of prevention. It's a gallon of prevention. So we are being serious about it. But I think it's up to us uh, to tell people to remain calm because we have a plan. And we are working together, Democrats and Republicans, the House, the Senate, and the, House, or, and the governor are all working together. And we will get through this because we have a plan and, and Minnesota is a great place and knows how to deal with this. So I, I'm offering my support for this bill as well. Members, we're on final passage of Senate File 3813 as amended. Seeing no further discussion, the secretary will take the roll.
All members voting who have the desire to vote, the secretary will close the roll. There being 64 ayes and zero nays, the bill is passed and it's titled agreed to.